Hello and welcome to the first class of business communication in the Tippy MBA program. My name is Nick Westergaard and I'm your instructor. And in rolling out this new course, it's only fitting that our very first module is called Introduction to Business Communication. So what I want to talk about here in this very first module is I want to go through some background, both mine and background of the course itself. I want to talk a little bit about the challenges of communication in the digital age. We'll also discuss the Tippy business communication framework. I'll then provide a course overview, kind of the standard syllabus stuff, and then we'll take a look at next steps with what's ahead as well. So first, some background on both me and the course itself. This is one of my favorite slides in that it is a terribly awkward photo of me speaking that I am in great juxtaposition now standing in front of while speaking. And that's simply to illustrate the point that I spend a lot of time in front of audiences speaking, usually about branding and marketing. I have a business called Brand Driven Digital. I help organizations of all shapes and sizes build better brands online. I also teach branding and digital marketing right here at the university as well. Maybe some of you have had my social media marketing course in the MBA program, maybe brand management, strategic brand positioning. I also do some teaching at the undergraduate level as well also. But when I am not in front of an audience, I am online in some form or another because, as noted, I spend a lot of time teaching digital marketing. I create a lot of digital marketing content at my site, branddrivendigital.com. I host a weekly podcast called On Brand, where we talk with brand builders from Ben & Jerry's, Allianz, uh, Minnesota Vikings, The Onion, Ben & Jerry's. Uh, I've also written a book about digital marketing called Get Scrappy, Smarter Digital Marketing for Businesses Big and Small. And I'm also wrapping up another book on branding as well. And one more bit of context about me is that all of this stuff that I do, I do in a home officing environment. And you might be hearing this and saying, well, so what all kinds of us do things in a home officing environment, that's not incredibly crazy. But the secret that I'm going to share with you is if you follow through this door right here on the other side of it, you will find my five kids. That's because I home office with five kids in and around the house. It is a little bit crazy. If anyone out there is a Game of Thrones fan, you know, they're fond of saying that winter is coming. Well, in my house, where my wife and I both home office, we are fond of saying that summer is coming. So, suffice to say, I know a little bit about how to bring about some order from chaos as well. So, let's talk specifically about why I, the branding and digital marketing person, am here before you today talking about this vast topic of communication. And communication is something that a lot of us want, but yet so few of us understand it. Now, kind of the convergence of marketing and the MBA program is us listening to the marketplace as well. And one of the sources where we get a lot of information is from the MBA roundtable that Bloomberg puts together. And in that, they note that communication skills are less common in MBA programs, but more desired by employers. So if I think of this as kind of that traditional consulting axis that I think about as a consultant a lot, where you have something that is highly desired and could easily be implemented, this to me seems like it should be a win-win. And we also see that communication skills are what recruiters are looking for as well. So not only the employers that are hiring students, professionals like you, but also the recruiters that are helping connect those dots as well. And when we look beyond some of the quantitative insights, we also get qualitative feedback 
that that's what employers are looking for. This respondent from Nissan notes that in MBA programs, we need more emphasis in developing softer skills, communication, leadership, influencing, creative thinking, and so forth. From the tech sector, we think about the tech sector as a new and emerging sector as being perhaps somewhat different. Maybe there are different, more technical skills that are needed from these employers. But this respondent also notes that developing the student's communication, teamwork, and interpersonal skills are critical. Everything we do involves working with other people. Another respondent notes that communication is key. You can have all of the financial tools, but if you can't communicate your point clearly, none of it will matter. So we've gone from a major global employer like Nissan into the tech sector, now over on the nonprofit government side. Exceptional business sense and problem solving skills and strong oral and written communication skills. And I think it's worth pointing out from all of these different sources how critical these skills are across different types of organizations in different sectors. Communication skills are very much in demand today. And when we look at this ranking of how employers value these skills, I also think it's interesting because this is, in ascending order, what employers want the most. And we see communication at the very top. Communication, teamwork, leadership, technical, managerial. And yet I think that sometimes we approach this kind of the other way around and focus on managerial and technical skills and we may not have as much of a place for communication as perhaps we should. So when we say communication, this somewhat generic term, what do we mean? Well, we mean oral communication, written communication, and of course, presentation skills, as again noted by the MBA roundtable from Bloomberg. And of course, we've gone through employers in all sectors. We've gone to recruiters. We've looked in various types of organizations. But now, of course, which skills do MBA alumni wish that they had more of in business school? So this would be one of those somewhat awkward moments in the classroom where I'd be working to draw out participation from you. We've talked about all of this. Everybody wants communication. So what does everybody, all alumni, say that they need? Communication. So you don't have to read too much into all of the tea leaves here to realize that we have a communication need in the world of work today. And this is realized everywhere across all sorts of different examples. You might be asking, as I transition slides, why I am all of a sudden standing in front of Alan Alda. Yes, I am a huge fan of the television show MASH. Yes, I love his work in movies like Crimes and Misdemeanors, The Aviator, even parts in things like uh, The West Wing, Horace and Pete, Louis C.K.'s TV series. But I'm a huge fan of Alan Alda because he gets this as well. Now, if you are a Deep Cuts Alan Alda fan, you know, especially if you're a really popular person that spends a lot of time watching PBS, that Alda's also the host of Scientific American Frontiers. And in that, he talks with uh, groundbreaking scientists on all sorts of important discoveries, things like self-driving cars, uh, things with advanced manufacturing, all sorts of great discoveries in science. But what he's found in talking to all of these innovative leaders with great discoveries, with great topics to talk about, is that they are very challenged in doing so. So much so that he notes that people are dying because we can't communicate in ways that allow us to understand one another. That sounds like an exaggeration, but I don't think that it is. When patients can't relate to their doctors and don't follow their orders, when engineers can't convince a town that the dam would break, when a parent can't win the trust of a child enough to warn her off of a lethal drug, they can be headed for a serious ending. So seeing this, understanding that we have huge public health challenges, huge things that science can help us with, and our scientists 
can't communicate that to the public, that's a problem. So it's one thing to understand a problem. Alda's also putting his money where his mouth is as well and has set up the Alda Center at uh, State University, New York, Stony Brook. And they're doing all sorts of groundbreaking things in science communication. Uh, one bit of research that uh, he often cites in talking about that program is the ice water experiment. And this is where a group of individuals were shown a series of photos, and one group within that had their hand in a bucket of ice water. And then a week later, those same respondents, those subjects, were asked to rattle off which photos they remembered. And the group with the hand in the ice water uh, was a group that recalled those correct responses uh, at a better rate. So this could sound like weird summer camp hazing. We're not going to short sheet anybody's bed next. But the point of this is one of the easiest ways to elicit an emotional response is through the physiological stimuli that comes from putting your hand in ice water. So all of a sudden, you have a very emotional response to that, but it triggers your brain to help aid all of that recall as well. So I'm not suggesting that the first idea that you need to implement as a result of this class is making sure that your audience at work has their hands in buckets of ice water, but simply that there are tools that we can use, tools that can help us embed emotion into our communication without the benefit of that bucket of ice water. Tools like story, tools like visuals as well. Because it is a very challenging time that we find ourselves in to communicate also. Talk about all of those different digital media tools that we are surrounded by. Things that if you took social media marketing, you know, we spent a lot of time on tools like Facebook 